Let's see how we can implement infinite scrolling in React using the Intersection Observer API. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamid. I'm a full stack JavaScript developer. And here on this channel, we talk about modern web dev topics like React and Next.js. Let's go. So I'm assuming that you're already familiar with the Intersection Observer. If you're not, I have a blog post on my site. I will link it in the description where I summarize everything that you need to know about it. But basically, the intersection observer allows you to register a callback. So it will be executed whenever a target element intersects with your root element. Now, if you don't want to specify your root element, that element will be the viewport. Uh, but you can uh, specify a scrollable root element as the element you want to kind of measure the intersection of your target element with. So you have different options that you can pass in. Uh, root, as I mentioned root margin is the box surrounding your root and then the threshold is the degree to which your target is kind of intersecting inside of your uh, root element then you would have your callback um, your callback receives all the entries objects of intersections and then the an instance of the observer object itself and then uh, you can do anything you want on those entries objects we're going to see this in action in a second uh, and for creating it, you would just call the constructor, which is intersection observer constructor. You pass in the callback and the options, and now you have your observer. Now to start observing a target element, you have to call um, the observe method on your observer object and pass in the target element that you want to observe. Again, it's observing a target element and the intersection to a specific uh, root element or to the viewport. Uh, generally speaking. Now, as you can see, our callback function receives the entries. We are going to loop over the entries array. And for e each entry, we have some information about what, what's happening in that intersection change. For example, is it intersecting right now or is it like exiting the viewport? And what is, um, let's say, the intersection ratio and information like that. And also a pointer to the entry target element uh, if you wanted to uh, do anything with that. So for example, here we are um, checking to see if you're intersecting or not, uh, getting a reference to our uh, target, and then we are setting a counter if the ratio is more than 0.75%. Uh, so this threshold that we saw uh, that could have passed in as an option is a number between zero and one. Uh, zero means that as soon as even one pixel uh, starts intersecting this callback is executed. If you set it to one, uh, you're saying that I want 100% of my target element to be inside my viewport, then the callback should be executed. You can also pass in an array. So you're literally telling the observer to execute your callback at these intersections or at these ratios. So when a quarter of your target element is visible, uh, it will be fired. One half of it, when 75% of it, and so forth and so on. And now here, we're checking to see uh, we are raising our counter or we are counting for that intersection only if 75% of our target is visible in our viewport. Now your intersection observer instance or object has different methods on it. As we've seen, the observe method uh, is for you to pass a target and start observing uh, that specific target. Now you can call disconnect on it, which uh, stops the observer from observing any target. So it just disconnects the observer altogether. Uh, you can call unobserve on it and pass a target, which then tells the observer to stop specifically watching for this specific target. Again, if you want, uh, have a look at the post. It's the summary of uh, what you would find uh, in DMDN documentations or different pages for the API and for the, const uh, for the constructor. I've just condensed it here in OneNote so it's simple and easy for you to do. Now, what are we gonna do with this? So I have, uh, I I've been building a Netflix clone. Um, I am currently rewriting this in Next.js um, before I have created this with React. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we have this movies page and what we like to do is uh, when we, we are scrolling down the page, we would like to uh, load more movies as the user is scrolling. So 
if if you look at uh, this scroll bar on the side if I refresh um, I think I'm fetching like 20 movies or something so there is not much there if you can see the scroll bar but as I'm scrolling the scroll bar keep jumping up which means that we are loading more and more um, movies and that's like the idea of infinite scrolling so it will keep loading as as long as the cursor from my database which is mongodb here returns um, a property that says hey there's there's still more um, to be fetched now how are we doing this um, so the idea for this implementation is that once we have a list of movies let's say we have 20 movies we want to attach an intersection observer to start observing the last element in our list. So when that last element, that last movie came into the viewport, we want to call a function that just fetches mo more movies. So the intersection part of it, we just saw how it works. So we have to get a reference uh, to the last element. We have to then create an intersection observer and then call the observe method on it and then pass that target element to start uh, watching over that target element. Now, now, how do we get a reference to that last element on our list? The first thing that might come to your mind is to use the use ref hook. If you set the use ref object to the reference attribute of a DOM node, React will give you a reference to that DOM node. While that's correct, there is going to be a problem doing that. Now imagine the first time that we are fetching our movies, we are fetching 10 movies. So this use ref is going to give us a reference to that last 10th element. Now we're going to pass that reference to our, as a target to our intersection observer. So when that comes to our viewport, we're going to call our fetching method to fetch more movies. Now this time around, React re-renders that list, re-renders this page and attaches the ref now to the 20th item, which is now the new last item. But in this change, it doesn't notify us that this reference actually has changed. So there is no way for us to now detach or disconnect our intersection observer from that 10th element and reconnect it to the 20th element. This is where use callback comes in. You might not know this about use callback, but let me just share with you a little information about the use callback. Now, you might know use callback as a hook to return memoized callback. So what you typically do for use callback is if you wanted to persist a function uh, value between re-renders, if you are using that function as a reference for your use effects or you're passing that function down to your children and you want to prevent those children from re-rendering unnecessarily, you might use use callback to memoize that function so it's not, it's kind of pointing or referencing the same function. In a sense, it's similar to use memo, it's just it returns a memoized version of this function. But, but there's another interesting use case for use callback that you might have not known. Now, you can use use callback as a ref, meaning that instead of use ref, if you set use callback as a ref attribute of a DOM element, React not only is going to give you a reference to that DOM node, but it's going to also call this callback function you pass to the use callback hook, is going to call that function every time it attaches or detaches the reference to that DOM node. Well, that's exactly what we want because the first time around when React gives us a reference to that last element in our list, React is going to call this callback function and it's going to actually pass a reference to that node to this callback function. This is where we can run the logic of creating our intersection observer and start observing that node. But then second time around, when our target actually entered the viewport and we fetched more movies, not only the reference is going to change to that last element, the 20th uh, item in the list, not only is that change is going to happen, but React is going to notify us by executing this callback function again, because it has attached and it has detached the reference from that 10th item and now attaches back again to that last item, the 20th item now. So let's go back to our code and see how we're doing it here. So my implementation says 
use callback, I'm passing in this callback function. This is going to be fired every time React is attaching a reference to a DOM node. Good, it's going to give me a reference to that node as well. So I'm looking to see if there is a node. Why am I checking this? Because remember, uh, the use callback is going to fire up this callback both for when it detaches the reference to the DOM node and attaches it again. When it's detaching from the DOM node and there is no node, I'm not interested in doing anything. So I return because there's nothing, there's no node for me to observe or unobserve. But all we're doing here is inside of this callback function, we're creating a new intersection and we're starting to observe that node that was passed to us by React. That node is the last item in the element which we're interested to observe the intersection of the viewport so that we can fetch more movies. Now there are more details in the implementation here. As you can see, I'm holding a reference to my observer using the use ref hook. Now use ref hook is like a box that can hold any value inside of it which persists between the renders of a component. So any value that you want, you can pass it to the current property of a ref object. Right, that's all we're doing. Now you might ask, why are we holding a value or holding a reference to our intersection observer? Well, because we need to disconnect or stop observing that tenth element when we already fetched and we have 20 elements. Otherwise, if you don't disconnect, you're going to have the intersection observer connected to the 10th, to the 20th, to the 30th at the same time. And anytime these elements are going to intersect in the viewport, we're going to fetch more movies. Whereas that's not the ideal uh, result for infinite scroll. We always want to watch the last element. If the last element intersects with the viewport, we're going to fetch more movies. We're going to stop observing that last element. We're going to attach the observer to now the new last element for that to come to the viewport and we fetch more movies. So to hold a reference to that same intersection observer that we created to watch for the 10th element. I'm using the use ref to hold a reference to that same object because remember anytime you're calling this new intersection observer, you're creating a new instance of intersection observer API to get that same reference to that same object we created in the last round. I'm just holding it in this use ref so I can call the disconnect on it. So that 10th element is no longer observed. Now I can start observing this new node and I'm also holding a reference inside this observe inside this use ref again. So this use ref is like a container that we are just holding our intersection observer for one round, start observing when the observation happens, when this entry happens, we're going to fetch more movies. And then we're going to attach a new intersection observer, which is observing the last, the new last element, and we're disconnecting it from the previous one, if that makes sense. So a uh, cool use case for the use callback. That's not that often. Typically, we use the use callback ref to memoize function values. But as you can see here, because React notifies us when it attaches a reference to the DOM node or detaches the reference to the DOM node by executing this callback function is the perfect place for us to start observing or disconnecting uh, and stopping observation of our intersection observer when we're implementing the infinite scroll. That's a wrap for this video, folks. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I try to be as responsive as I can there. If you learned anything from this video, give it a like. It helps put the content in front of more people like you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.